In previous cells, like in potentiometry or the galvanic cells, we've only had two electrodes because we only needed to measure the potential difference between the two sides. For voltammetry, where we also have to know the potential we're applying, it gets a little bit more complicated. And so you, the typical setup is the so-called three electrode setup. And then so if we have a solution, so here's my beaker again. And let's say it's filled with some something. And then so the question is, if we want to measure the potential of some change, of some analyte, how do we do that? And so we can do a similar reference electrode to what we've previously done. So actually, I'll do that in green. So here, over here, I'm going to have, let's say, we could do silver, silver chloride, for example. So this would be reference electrode. Um, so again, this is the frit that communicates with the cell or aka a porous membrane, and then here's my internal solution. So one example, so I said it was, could be silver, silver chloride, uh, or I guess silver chloride, silver electrode. And then so this has one reference. And then so just like in potentiometry, we could put a voltmeter here and measure the difference between this known potential, this cell, and our working electrode. So this is my working electrode. I'll do this in pink. And then so so far this setup, this two electrode setup, is exactly what we had for potentiometry. So we'd be to we'd be able to measure the difference between the working electrode and the reference electrode very accurately based on just typical potentiometry. So now the third electrode part is how do we vary the potential at this working electrode um, in order to get current to flow? So this is the, the third part. So here, if we then put some sort of power supply, power supply. So we want to be able to vary the potential. And then so this goes to the third electrode over here. And this is the so-called counter electrode. Often this could be some sort of platinum wire or mesh. And then so the idea is uh, we would be able to put maybe like a positive charge here and a minus charge here. And then so as reactions happen, then the current would flow. Uh, the solution would, so you'd reduce or oxidize something at this electrode, and then it would diffuse over here, and then the, that way their circuit would close. And then here is where we know what potential that we're inputting using the power supply. So all three electrodes are necessary in order to get our experiment to go. Um, let's see, so this platinum wire mesh, the working electrode could be a number of materials, so often you might use, let's say, a platinum disc in some sort of plastic tube, or you could use gold. You could again use glassy carbon, carbon, graphite. So the, you can buy a number of materials for these. And then the reference electrode depends on what solution you're doing. So silver, silver chloride, or we could also do the SCE, the saturated calomel electrode, which was that mercurous chloride to mercury. Um, in organic solvents, sometimes you'll use silver, uh, silver nitrate. So silver plus, so silver nitrate in some sort of organic solution. Oh, sorry, that's cut off. Silver nitrate over silver metal. And then, so again, but you still need the reference electrode and it's in order to know, again, what potentials you're at. Um, one thing to keep in mind for this experiment, this is going to be temperature solvent dependent. So always know what temperature you have. Um, and uh, oh, one last thing to keep in mind is, again, we need things to conduct. So if you're doing cyclic voltammetry on something non-conductive in an organic solvent, um, this solution, so this analyte, solution has to be your analyte, what you're measuring. Um, and then so this could be maybe one millimolar, less than that 0.1 millimolar. But you also need the electrolyte. 
And this will typically be higher concentration, like 0.1 molar. So by electrolyte, I mean some sort of salt that does not react, and, but that lets you maintain your current and, um, in order to make everything conductive. So everything has to be conductive. Again, we had our salt bridge. We did our salts. So everything kind of must be balanced. Otherwise, things will go wrong. So for electrolyte, you could use just in, in water, you can do any typical salt. You can do sodium chloride. You can do whatever. Um, in organic solvents, sometimes you'll do tetrabutyl ammonium PF6. So tetrabutyl ammonium hexafluorophosphate. And so this is soluble enough because you have these four butyl chains on the ammonium to dissolve in like dichloromethane or THF. But at the same time, it's charged, and it can still conduct charge within your electrolyte. Um, when I learned electrochemistry, I was told this electrolyte, you know, this conductiveness is why you shouldn't pee on an electric fence, right? It's going to conduct electricity back to you, and then you'll be unhappy. OK, so with the setup, the final product out, out of it is, so as we are doing um, this experiment, we will use this power supply to vary the potential at this working electrode. We'll know the potential based on the photometry, and then we'll be able to measure out current. So uh, the final diagram, or the data that you get out, will be the x-axis is going to be potential in volts. And then up here, you'll have current. And then often, this will be in amps. So, but the typical range that you might see for a, a normal experiment might be you know, picoamps, nanoamps, microamps. So the current is very low. It depends kind of on your surface area of your electrode. And this is the plot. I'll point out that there are two conventions. So the so-called American convention, which I've also heard called the Texas convention, is you know, nicely backwards. So you put negative potentials to the right side, positive potentials to the, to the left. And then so on the y-axis, a positive current is cathodic, so reductive. And then a negative current is anodic. Um, if you are doing, if you live anywhere else, there's the IUPAC convention, which I prefer. So this is IUPAC. And in this case, you have positive to the right, negative to the left. And then here, positive current will be anodic. And then this would be cathodic. I point this out because there are still many papers and many, many old papers that have this convention, while many modern papers also have gone to this one. But the, both conventions are still in use. So if you're looking at data, you can't just kind of glance at it quickly. You have to look at it carefully to know what they're doing in order to say, in order for you to see what's happening. So that's practical aspects.